Um. Since the two of them do seem to have reflected, I wonder if it wouldn't be best to forgive them already? Though you might not have calmed down yet, not being able to move for a whole day is really tough you know? Since this is a man's dorm, there are lots of hungry men around so the two of them must have been scared too. Right Nye. Every time I heard footsteps I thought it was like all over for me Nano. No, as far as I know there shouldn't be that many hungry men around at all. We're allowed to go outside, and if you were starving for women you could just head to the red light district or something, and lately all of the first years are fine because of the rumored man-eating elf. Or was it dangerous for them because they've made a lot of enemies? Ah, uh, but there might be a lot of people who would just sell them off to a slave merchant if they found two girls bound like this. From now on we'll listen to what you say Nia, we'll become your henchmen Nia. That's why please like forgive us Nano. The two of them are pretty regretful. At least they look regretful. It's not like I have any absurd requests for you. But I won't forgive you if you make light of Roxy. Just saying that was enough to cause the two to turn ghastly pale and nod repeatedly. Of course, Nia. It wouldn't be strange even if we were killed after making fun of someone else's god Nia. You you you. I suddenly remembered like the terror of being chased by the Order of the Temple. When I told them that I had family in the Order of the Temple as well, the two of them became even more pale. It seems that the saying about having money and connections was right. After a little while, the laundry is done and the two of them happily put on their clothing. Just why is the action of putting on panties so arousing? To me it's even more erotic than watching them take them off. They've learned their place and put on their clothes. Because of this, their attitude returned. Even if I said that we'd listen to what you say, I won't do anything like making babies with you Nyan. That kind of thing is for after we've properly dated and married Nyan. That's right. But it's fine if you just want to like touch Rinia's boobs a little Nano. Right Nyan? If it's fine if you just want to. Why me Nyan? I'm expensive. If you gave me like. Expensive meat, Nano. Though these two girls are delinquents, they're relatively chaste. As expected of princesses. Still, half of that meek attitude from before was acting, huh? As long as they've really reflected then it's fine but... Ah, uh, that's right, Rudius Kun. Be careful of being ambushed, okay? At Fitz Senpai's words, the two of them made shocked expressions. Naya. Hang on. Fitz, don't say weird things Nia. That's right. Boss is a messed up fiend of a man Nia. If we lose again who knows what would happen to us, so just who would do something like that? Just who is a fiend of a man? That's a really horrible way of putting it. But if they're this scared of me, then at least I'll be able to sleep soundly at night. Boss, can we like go yet no no? Persina tilts her head slightly as she asks. Which reminds me, what's this boss business? Not that I mind. I'm hungry, so I wanna go back Nano, to eat meat. Right Naya, we haven't eaten or drunk since yesterday evening Naya. What's with that? It's like I'm the bad guy here. Have they really reflected enough? It seems like they haven't reflected enough, huh? The one who said that was Fitz Senpai. Fitz, this has nothing to with you Naya. That's right. Like, Fakunano. Fitz Senpai has become a little shocked. I shouted. You too, Siiza. The two of them unwillingly sit down. Fitz Senpai produced a bottle from his chest. It's a bottle with black paint inside. Then he produces a brush. This is what you'd call a good idea. When we're done, my anger is almost completely gone. Fitz, we'll remember this night. Like, Fakunano. The two of them are making resentful expressions. Both of their eyebrows are joined together into a monobrow, and there are eyes drawn on their eyelids. There's a beard that looks like something a thief might have drawn on their faces. And then on their cheeks. I'm a cat who lost to Rudeus I'm a dog who lost to Rudeus. It's a new style of body painting. It's a bit arousing, huh? I've used a paint that a certain clan uses to leave tattoos on their bodies. If I use a special chant it won't come off for the rest of your life. 
It seems to be such a pain. I guess it's this world's tattoo. Speaking of which, I saw such a thing a number of times during my adventurer days. It won't disappear if you just wash it with water you know. If you oppose Rudeus again, I'll use magic to make sure it doesn't disappear for your whole life. I, I get it Nyan, I won't do such a thing Nyan. I like get it Nano. The two nodded whilst trembling in trepidation. They're making some pretty terrible expressions, huh? If it becomes permanent they probably won't be able to become brides. Fitz Senpai is pretty nasty as well. You can leave for today, but you'll be spending all of tomorrow like that. If you do so, I'll erase it for you. However, the stuff on your bodies I won't erase for half a year. I get it, please forgive us Nyan. Sniff. Persona is in tears. By the way, some pretty indecent words are written on their backs. If it becomes permanent they'll probably live in shame for the rest of their lives. Since we'd get in trouble if the two of them are seen in the hallway, they left from the window. It's the second floor here, but it'll probably be okay. 19, it's only the second floor after all. Just before leaving, as if she suddenly remembered, Rinia asked. Boss, even though you're just a magician, what kind of training did you do to be able to see my movements? I didn't do anything special. I just followed my Shizu's teachings and did things like she said. The training that I did with Eris wasn't for nothing, I guess. I always thought of myself as weak. Comparing myself to Eris' growth, I had thought that I wasn't growing at all. However, it seems that we were just growing at different rates, and I might have become strong as well. Who's your Shizu, Nyan? Um, it's Ghislaine I guess. By Ghislaine. You mean my aunt? Yeah, that's right. Ghislaine the Sword King. I see Naya. Saying that, she made an accepting expression. By then, Naya. Later, boss. I'm like really sorry about the doll Nano. Said the two, and they left. Sorry, Rudeus Kun. Even though I'm unrelated, I got carried away. No, it was good to see the two of them afraid like that. More importantly. You said that you'd need a special chant, but if there were others who knew the chant wouldn't it be bad? It seems the two don't really know, but the tool has already been used and this chant isn't something that only fits senpai knows. If someone chanted the spell as a joke. Thinking this, I feel they're a little pitiful. Eh? Ah, MMN, that was a lie. Fitz senpai spoke rather blankly. There certainly is a paint like that but the one I used was just a normal one for drawing magic circles. It'll come off in the Washington. Fitz Senpai spoke while giggling. Almost like a child whose prank succeeded. I relaxed. Fitz Senpai stayed in my room for a little longer. For some reason he was fidgety and couldn't calm down. Walking back and forth in my room, he asked many times about this or that that he found curious. What's this? Is there something inside? Fitz Senpai had a good eye and pointed at the shrine. The god that my faith worships is enshrined in there. Huh? So you weren't a follower of the Millie's religion, Rudeus Kun. Could I have a look? The Roxy Faith is. Please don't open it. I stopped Fitz Senpai who was about to open the shrine. Our god is divine and isn't something for outsiders to gaze upon. And geez, what was up with me yesterday? Even if I showed them the panties, they just drew away from me. Ah, sorry. Fitz Senpai withdrew his hand in a fluster. After that he looked in this and that, but then suddenly his gaze stopped on top of my bed. He picks up my pillow. This pillow is making grainy sounds, huh? It's a self-made pillow. A self-made pillow. The mustard turrets monsters in the forests of the north drop seeds. There are nuts inside that resemble walnuts, but the shell resembles buckwheat chaff. That's why I crushed it and put it into a sack, which I then covered with monster fur. Since the day I completed it, I've been assured a good night's sleep. Het, do you mind if I try it out a little? Feel free. Fitz Senpai put down the pillow and lay on my bed. It's a good pillow, isn't it? You're the only one who's said that. 
The only other person who's tried it is Elina Lies. She said the best pillow is a man's arm though. Even laying down he won't take off his glasses. It's something he's probably picky about. I wonder if he'll let me see his real face one day. No, on the other hand, Fitz Senpai in sunglasses might be the real him. If I reached out my hand now, and took them off, what would happen? No, it's probably not just pickiness, he did say that he had a reason. For example he might have a complex about his eyes. I'd better forget it. I don't want to be hated. Fitz Senpai is still laying down, and for a while a silence hangs in the air. It might be because he's noticed my gaze, but Fitz Senpai sits up. It's about time I return to Ariel Sama. I see. Thank you for today. MMN, see you later, Rudius Kun. Thank you very much for everything. You're very welcome. Fitz Senpai left through the window. Though I was thinking just leave from through the corridor, it might be that the window is closer to the girl's dorm. Well whatever, a little smell was left in my room. I spread a powder that adventurers use to remove smells and lay on my bed. There's a smell that's different from usual coming from my pillow. It might be Fitz Senpai's scent. It's not unpleasant. Hue. This time abducting those two girls ended up in a pretty erotic situation, but as expected there are no signs of being cured. Whether it was looking at them or rubbing them, neither worked out. There's no progress, this is something that happened later, but those scribbles on their faces were seen by Zenoba the next day. Zenoba didn't seem as though he'd forgive them with only something like that. However, after being told you didn't even do anything this time, in conjunction with showing him my emergency repairs of the Roxy doll, he immediately started to smile widely and forgave them. Also, though their confinement had almost become a problem. It's not a big deal. Nothing happened, I just lost a duel and got this drawn on in their room as a prank, Nya. That's right. Nothing happened at all. Really, nothing happened at all Nano. Tremble tremble. Or so the two of them insisted and so it didn't turn into a big problem. All's well that ends well. Cliff Grimoire. The grandchild of the Pope of the Millie's faith. Young and excellent with magic, a genius youth. He was a bit quick to pick a fight, his self-respect was strong, and he had a habit of seeing himself as a big deal. As a result, he had no friends. He had talent. However, he didn't rely on this alone and was diligent in his training. Though his mouth was terrible, his actions weren't. Though they were few, there were those who thought well of him. Cliff was now sixteen. Though he had become an adult a year ago, there wasn't anyone to celebrate that. His reason for coming to the Magic University was simple. In a few words, it was due to a power struggle. A few years ago in Milishan there was an attempt on Amiko's, Shrine Maiden's, life. Because this incident was the work of the Pope's faction, the internal struggles intensified. During the conflicts, naturally the Pope had his grandchild take refuge on the other side of the world, in the kingdom of Renoa. Cliff, you possess great ability. Be not conceited and look outside of yourself. The Pope sent Cliff away. Cliff understood that there were expectations for him. It was natural. Though he had lost two heiress, he was still a genius after all. So Cliff thought. After a long journey, he arrived in the kingdom of Renoa, a harsh land. The food didn't suit him, the climate was harsh, and there was a fuss because his way of thinking was drastically different to the locals. Even so, Cliff continued to believe that he was a genius. He was a special student, the grandchild of the Pope, and as someone who would carry the Millie's faith in the future, he was different to others. So he thought. In his first year he received two major shocks. The first time was by a person named Zenoba Sharon. He was a Maiko. He was a person who was loved by the gods since birth. Though he was a bit messed up, his power was the real thing. He'd been seen lifting someone thrice his weight up by the head, and then throwing them. Though he had such power, he was at the magic university. He was learning magic focused completely on earth magic. From Cliff's perspective, his growth was slow. However, to begin with there shouldn't have been a need for a Maiko to learn magic. 
One of the theories regarding magic stated that it was a means for the weak to imitate the acts of the gods in the ancient past. Myko were people who possessed the power of the gods. They didn't have need to learn things like magic. Thinking that, Cliff went and asked him. Why are you learning magic? Um. There's something that I want to do. Saying this, Zenoba brought over a box and produced from it a doll. He then began to talk for a long time about the doll. Cliff only understood half of what Zenoba said. However, he at least understood from Zenoba's talk that this doll was something wonderful. I've become the disciple of this doll's creator, and I wish to spread dolls throughout the world with him. For this reason I must be able to create dolls. If I'm not capable of the fundamentals of doll creating by my next meeting with Shizu, I won't be able to face him. However, I do also want to be able to create dolls myself, you see. It was what people called a dream. That was something that Cliff didn't have. Nay, it was something Cliff had given up on. Even though Amiko would be burdened with the expectations of his homeland. Even though upon his homecoming, he probably wouldn't have any freedom. This man hadn't given up on his hope, in the chance that one day he might suddenly gain his freedom. And he planned to do what he wanted to do the moment that day came. Incidentally, Cliff didn't know about the circumstances surrounding the Sharon Kingdom and Zenoba. The conclusions he came to were a result of his common sense. He misunderstood. However, it left Cliff with a deep impression. He thought Zenoba was quite the person. What kind of person is this Shizu of yours? He's a person named Rudius Grey Rat. Hearing this, Cliff received an incredible surprise. Rudius Grey Rat. Since the day he was rejected by Eris, this name had remained in his heart. He hadn't thought that he'd hear it again here and furthermore from the mouth of the person who had left such an impression on him. The shock was huge. The second time was because of a senpai. Though this was as to be expected, Cliff had been under the impression that he was the strongest in the school. If you included close combat, then he was absolutely no match for Eris. However, he believed that there wasn't anyone who could beat him as a magician. He was a genius after all and the ones enrolled in the school were student level. Even among the teachers there were many who couldn't use more magic than he could. 20, as a result, he concluded he was the strongest in the school. This was simply him being conceited and was something he would learn roughly two months into enrollment. It was when he lost to the two beast race girls who were also rumored to be top class amongst the school, Rinya and Persina. Just who was it that started the fight? Cliff had a bad mouth and everything that came out of it was intolerable. At the time, though Rinya and Persina had already relatively calmed down, as expected, an impudent first year would rub them the wrong way. Cliff couldn't remember just what he had said that had angered them. However, he remembered the battle that followed. When Cliff used advanced level magic, Persina used elementary level magic to deal with it and at the same time put a stop to Cliff's chanting and movements. Rinia then drew closer and thoroughly beat him down. Because he had been beaten to a pulp in public, he cried once he was alone. Since it was two on one, it couldn't be helped. I didn't lose. He told himself. And then one day, a senpai named Fitz defeated the two of them by himself, and Cliff received his second major shock. There was always someone stronger. Since coming to this school, Cliff realized this obvious fact. And that just being able to use advanced level magic didn't make you strong was something that Cliff finally understood. Then two years after he first entered. He received two more shocks that were even greater. The first shock, Rudius Grey Rat entered the school. He had an expression that lacked confidence. He was wearing a shabby grey robe. On first meetings, he would ingratiate himself to others while debasing himself. He'd lower his back and took an attitude that could be called servile. When he saw women, his gaze would stick to them. He had no appeal as a man. He was too far from the person that Cliff had envisioned based on the things he had heard from Eris and Zenoba. A guy like this? He thought. It's probably just someone with the same name, he thought. However, Zenoba called him Shizu and he knew about Eris as well. In that case, he had lied to them. Cliff concluded. Piling up lies upon lies, 
he fooled Zenoba and Eris, he thought. As proof of that, even when Rhenia and Persina provoked him, he simply smiled foolishly and lowered his head. If he were truly strong, he beat the two of them down. Or so Cliff had judged. However, his true character would immediately be revealed, he thought. Zenoba was the real deal as a Maiko, and he was a hard worker as well. Rhenia and Persina's ability was also assured. He wouldn't be able to get by with lies or deception. Though he had also heard the rumor that Fitz was defeated by Rudius, there was surely some mistake or perhaps Rudius had lied again, or he had used some sort of cowardly trick. That was what Cliff had thought. But Rudius showed his true power. He was a user of chantless magic. To start with, Zenoba's adoration for him further increased. Renya and Percy also withdrew. That Fitz had recognized him as well, and it was said that once every few days they would study together in the library. Though he had this much ability he was seen going to classes too. They were classes in elementary level divine attack and barrier magic. Even though he'd have no use for them after all this time, he still greedily made to learn the things that he was lacking in. Rudius Greyrat had more ability than him. He was more diligent than him. He produced different results from him. It was a reality that Cliff shouldn't have wanted to recognize. However, it was probably because he had met with Zenoba, and had been defeated by Rhenia and Persina. Unexpectedly, he readily accepted it, that this youth was far, far ahead of him. Even so, it wasn't as though he had come to like him. Accepting this reality and coming to like Rudius were completely different matters after all. Then the final shock. It was something that happened on a certain day. It was something that happened when it had turned into the evening. It was something that happened while he was walking down the road. It was something that happened when he had looked up by chance. There, stood a goddess. She had magnificent golden hair. She was leaning against the window and with a languid expression she was looking outside. Her face, dyed in the red of the evening, was beautiful. Cliff's heart was pierced. His gaze was stolen at a glance. However, it was purely physical. During his childhood when he was yearning for the life of an adventurer, he had said something like it'd be nice if my bride were someone beautiful or something like that. The reason was because the alumni of the orphanage that had become clerics were beautiful. Exclamation mark. At the time, the woman by the window noticed Cliff. She gently smiled and waved at him. That gesture, that smile, that situation, all of it hit Cliff head on. Cliff thought. I was born to meet this woman. She was born to meet me. In that instant. Eris changed from the target of his first love into someone he simply admired. I'm attending the once-a-month homeroom. Presently, lined up around Myarzanoba, Rhenia, and Persina. As expected, it's a nice thing to have your friend's desks lined up along yours. Incidentally, Julie is sitting on Zenoba's lap. As always, Rhenia has her feet on the desk and her healthy thighs are freely revealed before me. This lifestyle where I can see these up close is really not bad. Boss eyes are always nigh ale to our legs nigh. So boss is also a hungry male huh? Looky, looky, Jaya. Don't put your hand up my skirt nigh. Since Renia occasionally provokes me for no reason, I feel her up without hesitation. However, no matter how much I may touch, it's all in vain. The libido that has nowhere to go turns into sadness, and it just piles up. Naya. What's with those eyes Naya? Even though you touched me yourself, why are you making such a face Naya? Just what is it that you didn't like about me Naya? Honestly speaking, these days I'd rather just touch their ears and tails. Cat ears and cat tails can heal you. Rinia is like, an idiot Nano. Persina is sitting just outside of reach and eating meat. Dried meat, grilled meat, fresh meat. Though there are a lot of types, it's essentially always meat. Though she normally pretends to be the cool type and makes fun of Rinia, if you lure her with meat her tail will wag about like an electric fan and she'll come towards you. Her fur is softer than Rinia's so it feels great to stroke. It's something that's been on my mind for a long time now, but the members of the Beast Trace don't have human ears. 
their hairline is sort of diagonally to the side of where we humans would have ears. However, it depends on the species and there are also those who have their ears further to the side. It's because their skull structure is different. It's probable that the internal structures of their ears are different as well. Were I a biologist, I'd probably love to dissect one of them for analysis. However, I'm not a biologist. The type of analysis I'd like to do is completely different. However, everything starts after I'm cured. Unlike Rinya, unless I offer her meat she won't let me pat her. On the other hand, as long as I give her meat, she'll let me do so. Though she's quite chaste, I'm still a little worried about her. Shizu, for a while now, the angle of the ankle has been getting worse. Gosh Yujin sama I'll fix it. Julie, call me master. And call Shizu Grand Master. Yes, master. Zenoba is the same as always. However, his position in this group has dropped to the lowest. Since the one who did all the work in the duel the other day was just me, Zenoba just ended up as a tag-along. I can't accept someone who just borrows someone else's authority, or so Rinia said. In response, Zenoba asserted I am Shizu's first disciple. However, I've also taught Silphi, Eris, and Ghislaine, making him the fourth. Since Ghislaine was also my master, excluding her puts him third. When I told him this, Zenoba made a miserable expression, and I felt a bit like I'd done something bad. I followed up and told him that he was my first disciple in doll making. The second doll making disciple Julie listened earnestly to Zenoba's lectures on the Roxy doll. It seems she's quite brainwashed now. She's also become quite motivated about doll making and will ask questions herself. Though I say that, she's still far from the level of Zenoba and I when it comes to talking about dolls. Also, though it's still unskillful, she can use chantless magic. As expected, you really can increase your mana capacity when you're young, you can also use chantless magic, and so it seems that Fitz Senpai's theory was on the mark. Grandmaster. I couldn't do it. Right. However, it might be because she's still young, but she fails a lot. Just now she made the bubble on the Roxy doll's leg bigger. It's probably impossible for her to create small-sized earth magic. Of course I'm not angry. I teach her to try things herself. I teach her not to feel bad about failing, and to try to redo it as many times as it takes. Failure is the mother of success, and if you give up upon failing once you're on a straight track to becoming a shut-in. It seems it's still a bit early for you to fix the Roxy doll, huh? I'm sorry. The eyes that she looks at me with are sometimes a little fearful. Why are you so afraid of me? Aren't I the one that saved you? When I tried asking this, I was told about a dwarven bedtime story, the whole monster. It lives inside of a hole, and occasionally comes out to abduct bad children. Even if they try to escape, the ground beneath their feet will turn into a bog and they'll be trapped. The monster then stuffs them into a sack and brings them back into the depths of his hole. Though the bad children are taken by the whole monster they will one day suddenly return, and be good children, almost like different people. I see, now that I'm told this it does make sense. I used a bog to defeat Rinya and Persina, and then I stuffed them into a sack and abducted and confined them. While Zenoba and Julie weren't there, Fitz and Pi helped me out and we concluded their punishment. Rinya and Persina were talking big to me. Perhaps that's how Julie saw it. Fa, I'm sleeping nigh. Like, lately in Scotland warm or nano. Boss, next time we'll show you our napping spot nigh. Eh? Is it okay to mess around with you while you sleep, Rinya san? Don't you think about anything but perverted things, boss? Shizu thinks about dolls before anything. Whenever you open your mouth complicated stuff comes out, so like, be quiet. However. Like, just do it and go buy me some meat. The teacher is about to come nigh. Like, dash for it then. In that case, I'll. If you're going to go, boss, then I may as well. Go ahead, go ahead. Nigh. Until the teacher arrives, we just continue to chat like this. Well, it was probably noisy. Without a doubt, it was noisy. 
Well then, there's another person in the room. He's sitting in the front. A youth studying by himself. A youth who's studying in earnest. Cliff. He got angry at our chatter and stood up in anger. You're noisy. I can't concentrate. If you're just here to play around then just go home. I shut up. Zenoba stopped chatting as well, and returned to Julie's lectures. However, the two former delinquents took that as an invitation to a fight. Just who the hell do you think you're talking to, Naya? The insides of your bag are like, all my meat from now on Nano! Exclamation mark has are suspended in the classroom. Usually those who have just been done in would be all show. However, I've heard that these two have already fought with Cliff. When Cliff first entered the school, he was done in by the two, and since then he's been earnestly studying. Using failure to feed growth. He's a diligent youth. It'd be better not to disturb him. We apologize. It seems we've gotten in the way of your studies, we'll be quiet. Come on, you two sit down, sit down, I said to sit, sit. If boss says that then there's no helping it Naya. Like, Fakunano. With unhappy expressions, Rinya and Persia sat with a thump. HMPH, if you get it then good. God, even Zenoba, what are you all doing? Cliff snorted. Rinya and Persia clicked their tongues. I won't get in the way of those who are living their lives seriously. I don't have any intention of living otherwise either though. Whatever the case, I probably won't cross paths with him. So I thought at the time. After that a week passed. As usual, I was researching teleportation with Fit Senpai. It's something I realized recently but there are some similarities between teleportation and summoning. The magic circles are similar. The color of the mana light is also similar. However, there are some decisive differences, that is people cannot be summoned. No matter the summoning magic, people can't be summoned. Magic beasts, ghosts, plants. All of these can be summoned but people can't be. Whether in literature, documents or stories, there are no mentions of human summoning. Humans, demons, beast people. Though there are many types in this world, as long as they're designated as people they can't be summoned. However, neither I nor Fitz Senpai are experts in summoning so though I say they're similar it's not a strong assertion. However, there's a part that I'm stuck at. The summoning of living people can't be done. Then what about just their soul? I don't speak of it. However, I thought that it would be good to ask an expert about it. The wandering soul of someone from another world. Would that be possible to summon? Fitz Senpai. Could you see if there's a teacher who's knowledgeable about summoning? Eh? Mn, got it. But I don't think there's anyone at this school who knows about anything but enchanting type 21, summoning, you know? Are there really any teachers who know about what we're researching? Is that so? Speaking of which, there really wasn't summoning magic listed amongst the available courses, huh? I noticed the things that I was familiar with but didn't pay much attention to the things that I wasn't. However, enchanting was categorized under summoning. Did I see that in a magic textbook? For now, there's probably nothing we can do but try searching for one. At that time, unease sprouted in my heart. I didn't let it show. It's a needless worry. There shouldn't be any connection. That disaster happened when I was ten. It had been ten years since I had reincarnated. Right, in those ten years, nothing had happened at all. There shouldn't be any connection. In this world, it might be that the sunrise and sunset are affected by the seasons. It was evening at the time when I first entered but on the way back to the dorms, it's night now. A characteristic of the north, now that the snow has completely vanished, is that only the reddish-brown ground remained. While walking along the stone-laden path embedded in this ground, I happened to hear a voice. Oi, wait. Don't think you can use your chance. From behind this school building appeared a fallen youth. Chasing them were six men. The youth had been gaining distance to chant. At first he had tried to use a large magic but were stopped by the men, but even when he used elementary magic it made no difference due to the numbers. The youth was cornered, beaten, and thrown about. 
The six of them were attacking the youth who was like a turtle, unable to move, just bearing with it. It was bullying. It was the scene of bullying. It was something that hurt to see. Unconsciously, I raised my voice. Oi, oi, you guys. Don't bully people, turtles, who can't escape. When I unconsciously ran up while saying that, the six of them simultaneously turned towards me with a glare. Because they were also a little taller than me, it felt daunting. The hell you say? However, one of them noticed. Oh, oi, Quagmire. Quagmire? R. Rudeus? The one who confined Rinius and Ann Persinus Ann in his room and trained them? That Rudeus? I didn't train them. Nah, that's just a story, right? Persinus Ann called him boss and wagged her tail at him, you know? But she'll basically wag her tail at anyone who gives her food. But you know, those two really listened to what he said, you know? Ah, I saw them with scribbles all over their faces in class, you know. What was it again? I'm Rudeus Sama's sex slave, was it? Nah, I didn't really see it, but... After he beat them in a duel, he kidnapped them as slaves? Seriously? Not just that, but someone from the Dorudia clan, you know? Doesn't he think about consequences? The men were just talking without even taking a glance at me. Finally, they nodded with a gulp, and with a shudder turned to look at me. After exchanging looks, they nod together. They then lower their gazes to the fallen youth. Oi, we'll let you off for today. For today. I'm sensitive to words like that. By for today, you mean that you'll do the same thing another day? Six of you bullying a single person? When I said this harshly, the six of them openly showed on their faces that this had become troublesome. TSK. Hey, Rudeus.san, this is none of your business, right? These guys are always the same. None of your business. None of your business. I was well aware that it was none of my business when I stuck my nose in you know. I don't know the circumstances, but six versus one is unfair, you know. The six of them exchange glances, and then shake their heads. Don't have a discussion using your eyes. We get it. We'll stop it. But you know, it's not like that guy is innocent. One of the men said that, and went back behind the school. The other five accompanied him. The area behind the school building might be their hangout. Phew. I sighed. As expected I get pretty nervous when faced with so many imposing guys. I've mentally simulated battles with multiple opponents, but even so, this is a matter of the heart. I wouldn't be afraid in a one versus one fight though. Hey, are you alright? I approached the youth who was getting up. While dusting off his clothes, he chanted healing in a quiet voice. It's to be expected of a magic university, but for even bullying victims to be able to use healing magic is. While I was thinking that, the youth turned his head. It was Cliff. Frankly speaking, I don't have any good memories of Cliff. Each time we meet he flares up and this time he'll probably just say you had no business saving me. I thought. You had no business. Cliff stopped speaking halfway. He then made an expression like he was solemnly thinking. He then let out a sigh. No, you saved me. Thanks. You're welcome. Bowing once, Cliff quickly walked away. I was shocked to see that. I certainly did save him. But for him to suddenly change his attitude like this. It's enough to make me wonder if he's scheming something. No. It might be best for me to obediently accept this. Though Cliff has been really snapping at me up until now, I've never snapped back. Cliff might have finally recognized that I'm not an enemy. To begin with, I don't even know why I was hated so much. Well whatever. I returned to the dorm. The next day. When I had just finished lunch, Cliff called out to me. Then, I was summoned behind the school building after school. Cliff was angry. I didn't know what he was angry about. But he was making a difficult expression. He might want to fight, huh? Or so I vaguely thought. I'd already activated my demon eye. Whilst paying attention to my surroundings, I gathered Mana to my right hand. To pay back my kindness with evil. 
Turtles sure are cruel these days. Or so I was thinking. All right. Here seems fine. Making sure no one was nearby, Cliff turned around. His face was bright red. I immediately understood. This wasn't a duel. He hadn't called me here for such a reason. On the contrary, it's a confession. That's basically how things are in a situation like this. Oh man. No matter how many times I've failed with women, I don't recall ever becoming a pants wrestler. 22, phew, it's tough being popular. Just kidding. T, the truth is. I. I've decided on what to say. I'll answer him with dignity. Let's just start out as friends first, then after that, once we get to know each other better, we'll still stay as just friends. There's someone I like. A, I. With shyness written all over his face, the completely blushing Cliff cast his eyes down. Am I going to reject this? My stomach hurts. I think about how it would be were this a girl. Though my sword is a holy sword, I don't have that sheath either. But Cliff raised his head and pointed to a certain place. It's her. His fingers pointed to the school building. Some distance away, a person can be seen through the window. Even from here I can see their swaying, long, blonde hair. Beholding the scenery of the school dyed in the color of the evening, with a languid expression she looks out the window. Today, I saw you. Talking to her. Is she an acquaintance? That's, um, could you introduce me? I. The person who had appeared in the school building. That was a person I knew well. An oft-talked about problem child. A devilish woman who would eat up her classmates like a succubus. It was a linealized dragon road. I was wondering just which of these I should pick as the subtitle. Cliff versus a lies. The deceived virgin the impure lust that crushes a pure love. I became intimate with that boy that bothered me. That impudent boy's crush? But decided against it. Good day, this is Rudius. Um, right, so you see, what happened was, you see, the other day Cliff Cun asked me a favor you see. He was in love with Elinalyze, and wanted me to introduce him. Right. Certainly, Elinalyze is my acquaintance. She's my parents' former party member you see. Right. Though I don't know much about how romance works in this world, if Cliff is in love, and if he wants my cooperation so that he can make his feelings clear, then I feel that I also want to help him out. That's how I feel. That's how I feel, but... Let's just recall what kind of a person Elinalyze is. Elinalyze Dragon Road. S-Class Adventurer. Vanguard. Warrior. Magic University First Year. Age 50 unexpectedly diligent in her studies, and has been said to have excellent grades. Has recently been able to incorporate elementary water magic into her battle tactics. Adventurers who accompany her for a long time come to hate her, but she's capable, she's good at taking care of others, and she's good in bed. Right, she's good in bed. Her body is afflicted with a certain curse. Thus, night after night she has to slurp up men's essence. 23. Thus, she'll never stay with a particular man, and she just repeats one night stands over and over again. I've heard that she's given birth before. She wouldn't tell me what happened to those children. It's possible that she just abandoned them here or there, or sold them into slavery. In reality though, she hardly ever becomes pregnant, so it does seem that she raises them properly until they're independent though. Well anyway, I don't know the details. To introduce such a person as the target of someone's love is, is it really a good idea? Cliff doesn't know that Elinalyze is that kind of person. When I asked him about his impression of Elinalyze, I became greatly troubled. Elinalyze was an untainted, pure white angel. His reply was along these lines. Of course, he's also investigated Elinalyze. The sovereign by the window. She's extremely famous. Her name is Elinalyze Dragon Road. It's a beautiful and valiant name that's worthy of her. Though this is obvious, she's diligent and her grades are said to be good as well. Because she was an adventurer until just recently, she's also knowledgeable about the application of magic in real combat. Anyway, 
I have nothing to say about this except for the sovereign by the window thing. The window is probably just where she sticks her butt out after all. However, I don't think that Cliff knows that the sovereign stands by windows to have sex. Still, that rumor that she'll sleep with people without discrimination is no good. It's likely that someone who's jealous of her has been spreading it. Or so Cliff interpreted for the most important part. The fight the other day was the same. The six men from the other day had heard the rumors about Alina Lies. That she would spread her legs to anyone, and that they should have a go with her as well, they said. Hearing this, Cliff became angry. Don't look down on others because of rumors, he warned them. Of course the rumors are true, but... The six of them were upperclassmen, they had strong physiques, and they were delinquents. Because they were given a warning by Cliff who was not only an underclassman, but also smaller than them, they got a little irritated and retorted with vulgar expressions. Just the other day my Kuhai and another man were taken care of by her at the same time. Since you can't see the truth, how about you go have her take care of your first time as well? Cliff was enraged. In a fit of recklessness, he attacked them. Not with magic. With his fists. Cliff was supposed to be pretty good at fighting as well. But it was six versus one. Their physiques were different. It would have been better had he used magic, but the moment he used his fists to engage them, he lost all chance of winning. And then, I appeared. For the purpose of gathering information, it was a splendid chat that we had. But... Now what do I do? I have no obligations towards Cliff. Even if I introduce him to Elinalize and that illusion of his is smashed to pieces, it's still none of my business. But even so. Even so, can I just push him on to Elinalize without a care? Elinalize might be grateful to me. She's generally quite happy about being introduced to men. Lately she's been especially interested in hunting for virgins, and it can't be helped. It's nice when they're innocent and apologetic, and for their first time they put up a strong front. It's nice when, although they were like that in the beginning, after doing it again and again, they start to change. In my previous life, this was something that I'd seen countless times in the road. That's why it's not like I can't understand her feelings. Cliff looks to be a virgin, and Elina lies will probably gladly eat him up. But how would Cliff be? He's misunderstanding the type of person that Alina Lies is. If he met her for real and started going out with her, he'd probably see how she really is. Wouldn't he be angry at that time? He might end up thinking that it was my fault that he had to go through something horrible. If you ask me it'd be getting his just deserts, but if I introduce him knowing all this, I'll have my small share of responsibility too. But on the other hand, I might have no choice but to introduce him. He might come up with some weird suspicions about me if I don't. For example, that I might actually be aiming for Elina lies as well, or something. Were my disease to heal, I might want to try that kind of one-night stand with her as well. However, there's no way that I'd be aiming for her. What should I do? And so. Fitz Senpai, there's something I'd like to discuss with you. Is that okay? After school I went to the library and asked that of Fitz Senpai. What? It's kind of a love problem. A love problem? Fitz Senpai turned his whole body towards me. Almost leaning his whole body in, his mouth turned just a little crooked. R. Rudius Kun, you have someone you like? He's unexpectedly enthusiastic about this. His eyes are sparkling. Well, they may or may not be. I can't tell with the glasses on. Fitz Senpai is probably also at an age where he's interested in romance. No, it's about someone I know. Someone you know? Yes, someone I know. M, M, N. Continue. This acquaintance has become enamored with someone at first sight. First sight. And so, by discussing with me. See, could it be Ariel Sama? I. If that's the case then it's pointless. There are heaps of people who wanted my help for this but. Fitz Senpai starts to trail off. There are probably lots of people whose gazes were stolen by that princess at first sight. It's natural that as a guard you'd see them all as pests that you'd want to shut out. No, 
It's someone else. It's not Princess Ariel. I, I see. Thank goodness. This acquaintance of mine had their gaze stolen by that person. It's someone that I know, if I introduce them as a love interest there's a bit of a problem, you see. I'm hesitant over whether or not to introduce them. When I looked at Fitz Senpai by chance, I found that he was making a strange expression. He had his hand to his mouth, and a strong gaze came at me from beneath his sunglasses. Does this acquaintance know about this woman's problem? No, he doesn't. Did I mention that it was a woman? No, it's probably because we were talking about Princess Ariel that he just went on assuming that it was a woman. Well, since if Lionelize is a woman, there's no problem but. Or could it be that he thinks that I'm the acquaintance? I'm just saying this to make sure, but this isn't about me, you know. Since it's Fitz Senpai, I'll tell you that it's the special student Cliff Senpai. Ah, uh, really? Sorry, I misunderstood. Fitz Senpai is scratching behind his ear. Did he really think it was about me? Well, saying stuff like someone I know is a cliched way of talking about your own matters after all. Anyway, that's how it is, so what should I do? Um, perhaps you should tell them about that problem. Or, not, I wonder. Unless of course there's a reason you can't tell him. Fitz Senpai seems to be lacking in confidence a little. Speaking of which, Senpai is also a virgin, huh? He might not have much experience in love matters. There's no problem if I tell him, but Cliff Senpai is misunderstanding and he's an intense person. So if I tell him there's a good chance he might not believe me. He might even misunderstand and think that I also like that woman. Ah, uh, really that could happen. Yes. That's why I was thinking that perhaps it might be better if he doesn't hear it from me. Amen. If I'm the one who says it, he could misunderstand a little. It might be better for Cliff to hear it from another woman that he trusts, or from words around him, no, it might be best if he hears it from the person herself, huh? Um, Rudeus Kun, do you not like her too? I don't hate her, but I can't see her as a love interest. Since I hear that she's really skilled, I would be interested in trying a night with her, though I'd be a little reluctant to date her seriously. I'd immediately be cheated on, after all. So that's how it is. But though you might not be able to see her like that, it might look different to Cliff Cun, huh? Right? To a person who sees her as an untainted white angel, he probably doesn't think that anyone can see her any differently, but just who is that? MMM. Should I introduce him? Should I not introduce him? I'm lost. After a while, Fitz Senpai murmured. Um, I have someone that I like as well, so I can understand his feelings. It'd normally be someone I wouldn't see as a love interest, but I like them even so. Someone that Fitz Senpai likes? I wonder who? Thinking about it normally, it'd be Princess Ariel, huh? Just now he had that huge reaction as well. Certainly it'd be difficult to see Princess Ariel as a love interest. She's Azura royalty after all, and she's way out of his league. No, it's fine even so. I think it'd be tough only being able to watch them and not confess. Fitz Senpai's face is red. He's red all the way up to his ears. That's why, um, wouldn't it be fine to properly introduce them and give him a chance to confess? But there might be problems that arise afterwards. That can't be helped. I mean, after you've already introduced them, what happens afterwards is something that's their problem right? Oh, that's true. What happens after the introduction is their problem. That's certainly true. As long as I make this clear beforehand, it should be fine. I understand. I'll try doing it like that, then. Fitz Senpai, thank you very much. M, 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 N. I'm glad that I, was of, help. Fitz Senpai seemed a little unconfident. He's probably thinking something like what am I talking all big for when I have no experience? However, even without experience, what he said was spot on, so there's no problems at all. Anyway, I've decided on my approach. I'm a bit concerned about Fitz Senpai since he collapsed onto his desk when I left, but it's probably because at his age, acting all big and giving advice is something embarrassing. 
All I have are thanks for him though. The next day, I called out to Cliff. Cliff, whose gaze held a little anticipation. I don't mind introducing you, but there's just something I'd like to say. What is it? Cliff Senpai. Since I've also formed a party with a line alive San before, I know a bit more about her than other people do. At formed a party, Cliff's eyebrows twitched a little. I won't say anything about her temperament myself. However, that's not because I'm deceiving you. I want you two to meet in person, talk, and then decide for yourself what kind of person she is. What do you mean? In other words, what happens afterwards? For example she's different from what you say or why didn't you say anything or you've really pulled a blind one on me, I'm saying I don't want to be accused of such things afterwards.